much of my spring has been involved in this secret uh, knitting project, and so I thought I'd put a little small video together and show you the wedding shawl that I made for my soon-to-be daughter-in-law. So my oldest son is getting married this summer, um, the end of July, and so back in March, I believe it was, actually at Christmas break, I ordered the wool. It um, took me a while to find uh, bridal white wool. There are lots of natural colors in my local yarn shop, but I wanted white. And so I think I got the yarn in at the end of the Christmas, December break, but then I had a sweater that I had promised to my husband the year before, needed to get that off the needles. And then in March, once that was off the needles, um, I needed to get the shawl going. And I wanted to have the shawl ready for a bridal shower so that I could give it to her then. She doesn't know um, about the shawl. I think she has a hint that it's coming. Well, I think she has a hint that I have made her something. Um, she doesn't have a clue what it is. So in the sort of Shetland wedding ring shawl tradition, I thought I would just make something that was within my capabilities that signified a welcome to the family. And I looked for a motif that had Lily of the Valley because that's my absolute favorite flower. And um, my wedding invitations had Lily of the Valley embossed on them. So I, want, I just thought that would be a nice theme. So I went with the Queen Sylvia shawl. And this is the finished result. And there'll be better pictures of it. It's really hard. I'm not a great photographer. It's really hard. And my fern keeps getting in the way. And the light's really bad today. <sighs> anyway, I'm not the best photographer. So I've taken some still photos. I've taken some photos of the process um, at the end. Blocking and washing. Um, to share with you because I missed that part of this um, process. I find that when I can post or talk about my knitting, it spurs me on to more progress. But I couldn't do that. She follows me on Instagram, so I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't even make a video of it that I would hope that she wouldn't see. I don't know if she watches these videos. Not that I have that many, but it was just gonna, just had to be secret. And I realized then how much motivation I get from sharing or knowing that if I could only get to this part then I could share it with you on a podcast or something like that. I have one last task. It's been washed and it's been blocked but I do need to go in and weave in the ends. It is a little over the my wingspan long so it should be a nice watch me get this thing all dirty and it should be a light summer drape, um, just a long rectangle, should she choose to wear it. When I give it to her, I'm going to give it to her with the notion that this is just a gift from me. She doesn't have to wear it at the wedding. She doesn't ever have to use it. She can stick it on a sideboard and, you know, use it as a tablecloth. It doesn't matter. For me, it was about saying welcome to the family with something that is me. And that would be knitting and this beautiful sort of lily of the valley motif that goes in the Queen Sylvia shawl. Um, this is in the book um, Estonia Estonia Knits, or I'll I'll have to I'll have to take a picture or put the name of the, the book down here because I've it's gone out of my head. Um, and it's lovely. So you knit the center rectangle and then you pick up the border and knit on the edging. Both patterns are fairly easily memorized. Um, that basic lace motif in the middle here with the Lily of the Valley part is basically 20 repeats yeah, managed to do that well. Okay, 20 repeats of each row of the row, and 
it's pretty quick and easy to learn the basic um, the basic order of stitches going this way. I did have to check the pattern, make sure I was on the right. Um, I had the right idea in my head, but that's mostly me double checking. Um, I usually, based on the way the pattern looked, I could learn to read my knitting pretty quickly. I knew I had a good idea of what needed to happen next, but still, to make sure, I would check my pattern. This was not baseball knitting. <laughs> I could not take this with me to the many baseball games I went to this spring for my youngest son. Uh, this was strictly at home when I could concentrate, and gosh, the spring was tough. Um, in terms of the amount of work I had going on, the number of baseball games we had going on. So finding the time to knit this um, in the evenings when I wasn't exhausted, it was tricky. But I got it done um, ahead of schedule or before I, I had a need for it. Didn't have to do any panic knitting, so that was good. But I'm also glad it's off the needles because now I can play with my yarn this summer and, and do other things now. Things I can talk about on a podcast, things that aren't secret. Um, the yarn is Findlay, which is um, it's a mulberry silk and mohair, and it doesn't have much of a fuzzy halo, which is kind of what I wanted. I didn't want that mohair fuzzy halo kind of um, situation. I really wanted it to be crisp. And I think I've achieved that. But it does have kind of a, it has a very soft and lovely feel to it. And a little bit of that sheen that comes with, sometimes with silk. It's not a, a, a strong sheen, but it, it makes it feel special. I used a, a, one complete ball of it. And then a pretty good part of the second ball. I didn't realize just how much the um, edging was going to um, require. So it's been blocked. I will tuck in the ends, weave in the ends, and then I will wrap it up and hope that she likes it. I'm pretty sure she'll like it. The jury's out on whether or not she'll wear it. It's a July 28th wedding in the southern United States. It's going to be blazing hot. It's outdoors <laughs> on our property. We have a large pond on our property. And they decided they wanted to get married here at home. So that'll be beautiful and fun. Um, I'm just hoping the weather cooperates. It could be 96, 97 degrees that day. So, um, not Celsius, obviously. Fahrenheit, because we're in the States. Um, so that's pretty warm. Her dress is sleeveless. Um, so this would be a nice throw maybe early in the evening or later in the evening when it might cool off. But if it's a typical July day, it may never cool off enough to want this next to your skin no matter how soft it is. But hopefully she'll like it. And I certainly had a lot of fun knitting it and creating an heirloom that can go on with my first son and his lovely bride-to-be. So enjoy the rest of the video, the little snippets of me putting this thing together, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. So my knitting for the past few months has been super top secret. And here is a pile of it. It doesn't look a whole lot like anything at this point, and that's because it is a lace wedding shawl for my soon-to-be new daughter-in-law. She doesn't know about it, so I couldn't post anything about it on Instagram. But I am showing you the progress here so that when I can give it to her, I can then release a video and show you what I've been up to. So this is the Queen Sylvia shawl, and I'm knitting it with a yarn called Findlay. It's a merino yarn, 50% merino, 50% silk um, yarn, and it's lovely to touch. I'm knitting it on some nice lace knitting needles, and I am currently very excited to be on the bind off. So, this is a new to me bind off. It is a um, knit two together kind of bind off. 
and then I'm going to be able to block it and um, show you the beauty of what it will look like once it's blocked and not just this great big mass of, of white sort of mess. It really just looks like ramen right now, um, which is always the beauty of lace knitting is that at some point you get to block it and all of the beauty of the um, the different elements comes out. Now, the thing with this is I am hoping to not find terribly many mistakes. I already know that one corner is going to look a little less than perfect, um, but I'm okay with that. Um, that's the way it's going to be. These little um, bumps here, these little nups, I am hoping are all secure. Sometimes when you are um, on the back side and you are purling, the little nup, um, it's sort of hard to make sure that you've picked up all the stitches. Um, and so if one of those is loose, when I go to block it and stretch it out, we could have a spiraling issue a very bad issue of um, unraveling. But we will cross that bridge when we get to it. I tried to take good care not to have that happen, but as you can imagine, each row has lots and lots of those, or each repeat of the lace motif has lots and lots of those little nups. So as careful as I could be, hmm, you never know. So I'm taking a few minutes to, um, from organizing my office to work on the bind off. And what I love about the bind off is how it reveals the scalloped edge that's going to exist on this shawl. So when it's on the needles, um, if you're new to lace knitting, you might be worried that it's not looking like what the finished pictures are looking like, where it has this nice scalloped edge. But as you bind off the stitches, the stitches in this particular row um, allow the knitting to naturally sort of poke out, whereas the stitches in this particular row um, cause the stitches to go inward. So I'm not having, I'm not pulling these um, in any kind of way as I'm binding off. They're just, these peaks are naturally forming. So that's really pretty cool. And the first corner is not the corner I had trouble with and looks like it's going to be just fine um, which is great. I think I said in a previous uh, snippet that I knew that one corner is going to be particularly awkward looking um, but this corner will look fine and so I have completed one edge of four bound off the first edge was a short edge so now I'm on a really long edge I've got a ways to go before I even get to the next hallmark or the next marker and so I better get back to it. Alright, so this has just come off the needles. You get a better idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. Um, the corners, i try to zoom in here. Um, there's the one where we started. And sorry if that makes you dizzy. And that's a good corner. Um, clearly the lace is all still kind of bunching up, crunching up. It's not nice and flat and pinned out. That's what blocking is going to do for us. If I pull it down, you can see that corner looks pretty good. And... So does that one. So where's the corner where the issues are? Well, hopefully nobody will ever know. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell. We'll look at it again when it's blocked. I'll go soak it probably tomorrow. And then pin it out with lots and lots of pens and my blocking pen uh, blocks. So today is the day I am going to finally block the wedding scarf. 
and I am filling my laundry sink with cold water. And I love both eucalyn and I love soak, but today I'm going with eucalyn because I don't have very much soap left. Um, this is a great um, no rinse wool wash, and I will soak this for about 20 minutes in the water. Um, I have enough water to cover, and I will just put. I do um, tend to clean the sink before I put wash any um, woolens in it because. The whole family uses this laundry sink as sort of a wash my greasy hands off after I work on a car kind of thing. And that would then create, it creates muck and, and grunge at the bottom. So I give it a, give the sink a thorough clean, rinse it out well, fill it with water, and the wool wash. And now I will leave this to soak. So we have been soaking for 20 minutes or so, and now I'm going to take it out and I'm just going to lay it on a towel. Um, I have a towel here, I keep a collection of slightly worn out um, bath towels in my laundry room, and I'm just going to scoop the shawl out, sort of let the water run off. I don't want to squeeze it or wring it or... Um, accidentally felt anything together. And then I'm just going to lay it on this towel and let it sit there for a while, let the towel sort of absorb some of the excess moisture for a while. And then later I will pin it out. And hopefully then it will transform into something more beautiful than its current sort of blobbiness. <clears throat> Let will sit there for a while, and I will get back to it in a little bit. What I find really interesting about the blocking is that even though I haven't blocked it yet, it's still laying here on the sweater. You can already see how much more relaxed the stitches are, and how it is really beginning to look like the shawl in the pictures, as opposed to this sort of shriveled up, um, bunchy kind of lace. But you can even without messing with it. It's already start. it's relaxed a lot and it's looking like it's going to be beautiful. So I've got the shawl basically blocked now. I will probably spend some time fiddling with it and making sure everything is straight. Go back and maybe straighten up some of these these lace points here. Make sure they're all straight. Um, it's one of those things you can probably fiddle with forever. I have some wonderful lace, or I have some wonderful blocking mats just on top of our spare bedroom bed. And I'm using um, the T-pens that came with the mats, and I'm using some Knitter's Pride Knit Blocker pin units. These are really fabulous because they just go in and and pin a section down at a time. And I will let it sit here for another day or so to get really good and dry um, once I get through fiddling with it and making sure things are straight. It um, should be about five feet long and that's what it's blocking out to be about. Um, I have um, one fake uh, <laughs> blocking mat in there because I didn't have enough to fit um, the shawl, but it's looking promising and the corners aren't looking too bad. Um, there's one corner that I think is off um, and I'm not even sure if I can figure out. I think it's that one. That one's a little bit off. This one looks nice the way it's supposed exactly the way it's supposed to be. For some reason one of the corners I simply could not get right. Um, it was always off no matter which way I went. 
I think that corner is okay. It's a little spread out. I need to go straighten that. That's what I will be doing, and then I will be letting it sit under the ceiling fan for the next few days. But I think we have achieved the goal of a beautiful wedding shawl um, as a gift to my future daughter.